Hi, welcome to the Retirement Railroad Matinee Modeling Tip of the Day. I'm Steve, and uh, I'm running some trains today. Uh, still testing out the uh, ballasting uh, work over here. Everything's been hunky dory, and and uh, I'm kind of at a spot now where I'm on hold as far as working on the, the layout. Not totally, but but. Uh, uh, and the reason being, I say on hold, is the farm scene back here. You know, I've got the back board up and it's painted. And of course, that's been up there a month or longer. And uh, uh, just some green and blue to, for, to be representative, so to speak. Um, but that's a, that's a farm scene back there. So Northern Illinois, you know, outside Chicago, uh, back in the 60s, even the suburbs were out in the corn, what are now uh, part of the Metroplex, so to speak, uh, uh, had cornfields, all right? Uh, I lived uh, 25 miles from downtown Chicago, and my town had cornfields, okay? And from my town, there was another small little town, Lyle, Illinois, and then Naperville, Illinois, and there were cornfields between each one of these towns. And then between Neighborville, the 10 miles to Aurora, was cornfield. Okay. Now you couldn't find a cornfield anywhere in that stretch. Okay. But back in the day, so you get the feeling. But anyway, I have ordered the backdrop. Uh, Jason from uh, the train, the train feed, uh, uh, turned me on to this company. Uh, train junkies and they've got photo backdrops and what I really liked uh, it was the the one dealing with corn and they have two they have corn and corn too go figure uh, was that uh, it represented northern Illinois flatness uh, and realistic corn now I've got some uh, uh, Buford uh, shops corn as well uh, to bring into the foreground, and uh, I'll uh, do that in in this area here as well. Uh, but anyway, the one thing their their corn field sky <laughs> it was 18 inches, only an inch and a half was corn. The rest was all sky. So I did talk to uh, the train junkie and uh, or junkies and uh, they are modifying it, adding it to be six inches of layered corn. <clears throat> and once they get that done, they'll send me a proof. I say, okay, boom, away we go. Extra charge? No. Uh, class act uh, guy or guys. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And maybe two weeks before I get that. So what do I do for two weeks other than run trains, which is a good thing. Uh, I really can't do anything here because anything I do here, I'll be leaning out, putting that backdrop up. All right, so this kind of area here is kind of off limits to work on. All right, I still have some detail work I can do over here in Donners Grove, Fairview. And uh, I, I really like how the lumber yard has detailed out. Uh, I added some uh, green uh, uh, T-rail fence posts the other day, which are actually for the, for the fencing for the uh, pasture over in the farm scene. Uh, I got more cars to get. I got some grass to put down there. And, but it's all coming along. Um, one other thing, I like to jump around, okay, do different things. I'll be at one stage here, another stage there, and if I feel like working um, on one aspect, you know, basic track work or basic scenery, electronics, whatever it may be, uh, I'll jump around, and I try to have the parts, whatever uh, I need, supplies, uh, to be able to do that on hand. 
So, <laughs> behind that camera right there over on the island, which will eventually uh, be the expansion, that is full of supplies. Okay? And uh, you can see over here uh, where Chicago will be. Uh, I've been using that as my modeling desk. And one of the things I'm going to have to start to do is transition some of these supplies into totes that I can pull out, put away, pull out, put away, instead of just having them out the way they are now. Uh, and uh, I've been, one of the tips of the day, uh, recent tips of the day was to uh, tidy up. And that'll be a continuation of that process. Well, I've got down here, I've got my bits, so to speak. These are uh, uh, not kits to complete. These are kits with uh, parts uh, that I can use. And uh, I do have um, two kits left to build. I got Union Station over there. But I also have this diesel fueling facility. Uh, and I built one of these before, which is back here uh, in the Cicero engine in the house. But that deep, the second diesel fuel facility goes here in Aurora. Right, so I've got that to do. And I'll probably do that for modeling Monday night uh, uh, or starting. Uh, I don't get in a hurry on my uh, models um, uh, just because that's when you make mistakes. And so I'll, it could take me upwards, upwards to two weeks to do a model. Unless. Unless it's the uh, super um, uh, tough barn silo <laughs> with six whole pieces from Walters <laughs> at $15. No figure. All right. I did get in uh, another round of flats from MTF, uh, a PTF designs, Nick the train freak. Uh, and uh, they're basically back here. Other than the tobacco barn. Here's the tobacco barn. Okay, that's part of the farm uh, farm scene. Uh, every farm has to have a barn. Uh, so it helps utilize that back corner up underneath the uh, desk. But back here, uh, I've got the abandoned warehouse. This one here was left over from the front side or flats I used back in Cicero. So it'll be back here. And this is part of the uh, uh, Owen Essential Van Buren yard, okay, which sits below uh, street level uh, between downtown Chicago and Grant Park and now Millennium. Um, it sits down, down in there at the end, but it actually feeds under the art institute. So, uh, but anyway, I wanted the effect of when a train comes through there with a cab ride camera on it, you see like the lower levels, you know, the basement level, so to speak, of uh, the downtown buildings along Michigan Avenue. And there's a couple more I have back here. This warehouse, which I believe is the Hines, uh, Nick's Hines warehouse. Uh, I just have it. I won't be using the smoke jack, so it's not here. And there's one more back here. Oh, this is the Hines. Uh, it'll be back here, too. And uh, then I'll use... Next, uh, these are Andy's trackside flats, which are nice. They're not as good as Nick's. Uh, they're nice, but be careful when you're ordering them. When I ordered them, the pictures did not necessarily match this. I did not order any. Well, I did. I ordered one with a storefront, and then I ordered another one based upon the picture. Did not have a storefront, and guess what? It does. Um, I will be utilizing, and I got a couple of duplicates. Here, so just be careful if you're ordering. I ordered some singles 
and then I ordered the sets of four. Alright, and uh, that's how I got duplicated. But the pictures in the were different. Right? And I, yes, I wrote them, never got a response. Right, so I wasn't going to have to get the customer service. But hey, that's me. Maybe you'll have better luck. So what I'll do is, on the ones that are doubled, I'll put them back to back. Alright? And slice off the bottom layer and put them here so you still have the top showing back on the other side. So there'll be a couple buildings where uh, on the backward here that will show on both sides. Okay. Then I've got some others. Some taller buildings that will also be along here. Um, and uh, I'll be getting a couple of uh, one day uh, scene scene, city scene uh, models, uh, the National Hotel for Walters, uh, just to balance out, I will actually put in, uh, Walters has a U.S. Post Office, three-story building, I'll actually kit bash that to represent the old main uh, post office in downtown Chicago, the guys now our expressway comes and drives through, all right, uh, that scene there, uh, pointing towards where you can look through and see Buckingham Fountain off on the Chicago Lakefront. Um, but, as you can see, I'm, I've got it all planned out, <laughs> but I can't do anything with it, per se, uh, until I get that island tidied up. So I'll get that island tidied up, move my work area then over to there, and uh, be able to uh, continue on, and especially since I'll be waiting for the uh, photo backdrop here so I can finish out all this. So, that's kind of where we're at, the tip of the day, you know. Uh, again, I like to have this, a lot of supplies around so I can do different aspects of the, of the uh, layout, and uh, uh, but you also have to have tidy up areas to be able to work in. So. I don't want to run out to the garage work on it all the time and build models because it's so much more convenient here to get a scope uh, of how it's going to look, how it's going to fit, etc. So, besides, I'm out here, I get to run trains. <laughs> oh, I want to thank you for joining me here at the Retirement Railroad Matinee Modeling. Again, I'm Steve, and y'all have a great day. Bye now.